Hello, everyone. This week's parsha of Oyaki Savo um, begins with the parsha of Bikurim. That, uh, the uh, Jewish farmer in Eretz soil brings uh, from the first fruit. Uh, as a, an offering in the Beit HaMikdash to the Kohen. <clears throat> so there are two parts to the mitzvah, so to speak. In the, in the Gemara and the Mishnah, it's called Mevi Vekore. Mevi brings it, Vekore, then he has to read this Parsha. The Parsha begins, Arami Oved Ovi, but all the way back to Yaakov Avinu, to Avrom Avinu, tells the whole story of the Jewish people. He took us to Egypt. We have trouble in Egypt. We were oppressed. He released us. And now we're able to come to our own land. And this is the first fruit of the property that the Rabbani Shalom has granted me. This Parsha of Parsha's Bikurim is really the basic Parsha of the Haggadah Shal Pesach. In the Haggadah of Pesach, the Baal Haggadah, whoever it may have been, uh, analyzes this Parsha word for word. And he quotes Psukim to explain the Parsha. The Psukim are taken from Chumash most, mostly, from the story of the Yitzhiyah Smitzray. So the question arises, and the Mephorshim all discuss it, it seems to be a, a bit of reverse logic here. The parsha that you quote should be from Yitzhak Mitzray. The parsha's Bo, parsha's Vayera, Shmos. That should be the parsha that you read. That's Yitzhak Mitzray. And then you can bring Psukim from Bikurim, so to speak, to reinforce the message. But the Balagoda did it just the opposite. The main parsha is the parsha of Bikuri. And to supplement it, to explain it, to broaden it, to give it deeper meaning, we look at the psukim as they refer to Yitzhak Mitzrayim itself. So uh, this is a topic that all the Meforshim discuss. And in one way or another, there's a unanimity of idea here amongst the Mephorshim, each in his own language and in his own way and in his own style. But the basic idea is what we call Hakora Satov, the ability to say thank you, the ability to appreciate what is given to us. So uh, for instance, uh, <clears throat> the Gemara says 
that a, a certain uh, scholar uh, went before the uh, Umud and he sang praises of God. And then he added all sorts of attributes and goodness to God. When he was done, so the, uh, the, the man, the, the leader of the congregation said to him, have you exhausted all of the prayers? Did you say everything? Obviously not. Because me Hashem, who can say? So the Mephoshim say that we would not be able to say anything if Anshe Knesses Hagdola, when they created the Seder Atrila, didn't uh, establish it for us. So we're riding, so to speak, on their shoulders. But it's like saying, uh, the Medrash uh, says, uh, it's like saying to a very wealthy man, you, you know, uh, it's, a, it's a nice tie you have. It's a nice tie, but the, the man owns half of Manhattan or he's got, uh, he owns Tesla or whatever, right? He said, you insult him. You don't recognize what he really has, how great he is. So we would not be able to say the praises of Hashem. Only what's established. And therefore, the Mephoshim say that the Agodesh of Pesach is really a thank you letter. It describes what happened. It explains to us the events that occurred. You want to see the Yotachazokos and Zuhadever, okay? We're giving you examples of it. But the entire process, <coughs> the entire process of the Magoda is to say thank you. And that's why it's called Halel Agodo. The great hallel, what's the, there's a small hallel. What's the small hallel? So that's the hallel that we say on Yonte, or we say on the night of the Seder, the uh, chapters of Tehillim. What the great hallel is, Hodu Lashem Kitol Kilolom Chazdo, all the Kilolom Chazdos that we say. That's the great one because that's the thank you hallel. The list of everything I thank you for, the sun, the moon, the stars. We went out of Egypt and we were saved in the desert. We got the Torah. The Rabboni Shalom has redeemed us over and over again. He has preserved us still today. So it's all thank you. The Hallelujah is because it's thank you. And that really is the symbol more than anything else of the parish of Bikuri. The farmer comes uh, to the Beit HaMikdash. In essence, he says, thank you. Chazal point out to us an interesting thing. Part of the idea that we have a Korban Toda So uh, the Gemara also says uh, the four uh, instances that people have to say, we say, So it's a description of the relationship. In the greater sense, and the Mephoshim point out that that really is a relationship of children to parents, of generations to generations, of students to scholars. I have to say, say thank you to my Rebbe, right? And that's the idea to stand for someone, to be courteous to people. That's an expression of gratitude. 
So here the parsha Bikurim is Kula Toda. And the whole thing is the gratitude that the person has that he's able to come to Yerushalayim and that he's able to bring the Bikurim to the coin and he has to express it. Maybe is one thing. We may have feelings of gratitude. We may have feelings of thank you. But to express it is a different thing. Kore. To be able to read it, to be able to say it. And that's the greatest expression. So uh, this Parsha is one of the basic Parshas in the Torah. And Parshim also point out the Parsha ends with a request. So the Mephoshim say, after you acknowledge the good that has been given to you, and then you are allowed to ask. Then you're going to allowed to ask for more. The idea of Melech Basode that we have in Chodesh Elul. God is around, you can ask him. But you have to say thank you first. Without the uh, idea of gratitude, so then it is almost a chutzpah to ask. Why, why am I entitled to anything? I gave you everything until now, you never even said thank you. So there was a time uh, in Jewish life that I remember that parents made bar mitzvah boys write thank you notes, right? <laughs> so you get the thank you note in a bad handwriting and you know that it is imposed upon the guy and he couldn't care less, but you got a note from him, he said thank you. It was a chinuch. <laughs> Today we have, uh, no one sends anything, you know, it's all uh, electronic, etc. You don't have to say thank you. The Torah wants us to say thank you. So that's the idea of Parshas Bikuri. Look what you did, you're here, you're in Eretz Yisrael. You have fruit from Eretz Yisrael. You're alive. Oh. So then the, the minimum is to say thank you. If you're able to do that, then we can ask for more. So that's also a preparation for Rosh Hashanah. We have a long list of things we're going to ask for. First, we have to say thank you for what happened. Got through the year. Those are the concepts. Uh, that lie in the, this introduction to the Parsha.